because at the Loftus Road end, Rangers have built yet another new stand, which means this ground now has a futuristic look with modern seating on all four sides. And when you bear in mind not one of these stands was here as recently as 1968, then Rangers can truly claim to have completely rebuilt their stadium in the space of just 13 years. They've also rebuilt their team to an extent since Terry Venables took over a year ago this month. The newest arrivals are number two John Gregory from Brighton, currently playing in midfield, and number nine Clive Allen, who hasn't scored here at home since he returned to Rangers. Andy King has been sold, Jerry Francis is out of the side, and now Mike Flanagan has a groin injury. So there's a full league debut at number seven for 20 years old Gary Micklewhite. Blackburn are unchanged, still without the injured Mick Spate, but with Ian Miller at number seven, the first signing for new manager Bobby Saxton, giving them width on the right and width on the left being provided by Noel Brotherston, whose injury last March may have cost Rovers promotion to the first division. He missed the rest of the season and they missed out on goal difference. The referee today is Brian Hill from Kettering. Rangers in hoops, Blackburn playing in red today. I'm not sure if it's the effect of three points for a win, but neither of these clubs has drawn a match so far in their second division programme this season. It's Glenn Roder for Rangers. Expect a fast game on this surface. The ball tends to run on a lot. Offside decision. Blackburn with Hamilton looking for Burke, but here's Clive Allen for Rangers. Stainrod's gone down the centre. Tackle was by Keeley. This is Curry. Mickle White's on the far post. Got it across well, and Curry came in. And the defender who came in with him got a very important touch. Corner's been given. Glenn Keeley was there on the far post, covering Tony Curry, but the new lad, Mickle White, number seven made that possible Rangers have got uh, Curry to take the corner Gillard and support coming in here flags up anyway for offside Nicole White again involved in that move Bobby Saxton the new manager of Blackburn Rovers in the centre there joined them from Plymouth Argyle when Howard Kendall left for Everton and an old favourite at Loftus Road Rodney Marsh watching the match alongside the Rangers chairman Jim Gregory this is Glenn Keeley for Blackburn Crawford Controlled by Stainrod. This is Curry. They're trying to stay on side of Rangers as Blackman move out. Next Fennick. And Stainrod comes in here, knocks it back, and it was turned away by Hamilton for the corner. For White again. Bob Hazel is coming in here on the keeper who takes his second fall. Curry in space. Outside him, Gillard. Now Clive Allen. Stainrod. Way by Keeley. They appeal for handball against Stainrod there, the defenders. But a corner has been given. Here's Mickle White. Brotherston intercepts. Waddock. Still Waddock. Oh, and Gregory came in. It's there. Geno was unlucky. He got a hand to it. But John Gregory has scored his third goal for QPR since joining them for Brighton. And Gary Waddock made it possible by getting away on the left. It was a well-cut back ball, that, tempting the goalkeeper, 
and the defenders, but Gregory slid in. Geno got a hand to that quite definitely, but could only help it into the corner. So a good start for Rangers. Place it there, Clive Allen. It's Keeley's header. Crawford. It's Burke. Brannigan. In the way was Gillard, and there goes Allen. Oh, what a superb save by Geno. Clive Allen put through again the ball, picking up pace off the surface. He went for the early volley. Must have thought he was on for his first home goal since rejoining Rangers. And Geno responded with a very good tip over. Here's Mikkel White. He came on a free transfer originally from Manchester United, where he never got into the league side. Well, a week ago today, the players left the field at Main Road. Mud splattered after playing in torrential rain. Today, they leave without a mark on their shirts or shorts, which is largely due to the surface they're playing on. Rangers, meantime, lead with a goal by John Gregory. Scored after 12 minutes, giving them the edge at half-time, and they deserve it. Come on, Tony! Scoring goals was Blackburn Rovers' main problem last season. Although they only missed out on promotion on goal difference, their record was 42 goals four in 42 games. And that speaks for itself. Here's Gillard for Rangers. This swift, accurate passing of Queen's Park Rangers has been the main feature of the match. Curry switching play to Gregory. He tried to find Stainrod, and it came in the end to Allen. And Stainrod goes in again. Gino saves. And may have kept his side in the match there, because the defenders were dreaming a little in allowing Stainrod to reach a ball that was never really his. And he got a touch on it, and Geno coming out blocked it well. Blackburn having to pull nearly everybody back to withstand this period of Rangers attacking, which is starting from players like Rhoda here at the back. They're moving the ball forward very swiftly indeed. This is Gillard. And now it's Waddock. And now it's Curry. And he might get Allen in here. He has. Can Allen score this time? Round the keeper. Well, the angle was tight. Another snappy move by Queen's Park Rangers. Tony Curry putting Clive Allen through. Geno came out. Allen went round him, giving himself a tight angle. He cut the ball back very well indeed, and it just missed the far post. And Tony Curry again. Oh, well played, and tries a shot response to Curry in this mood as Geno I'm sure will be the first to acknowledge is a marvellous player to watch he had options to pass the ball there as he has been doing most of the afternoon but he got his shot in first time and it was a good save here's Mikkel White with the shot Halfway through the second half, and Stainrod couldn't control that. And again, Rangers hurrying to corner Keeley. Gillard now. Stainrod. Stainrod shots, and Allen couldn't make it. It just won't go for Clive Allen. He's going through the sort of spell that Kenny Dalglish went through for such a long time in league matches.
Steinrod there inside the area had the first shot. Geno could only parry it and Clive Allen just seemed to get the wrong side of the ball when on another day he could so easily have finished it off. Tony Curry to Gillow. And Curry again from Steinrod and now Allen. Oh, what a lovely drag back by Clive Allen. He still can't get the finish right. But you've got to admire the way he made the space. Curry and Steinrod involved in the move. And when it came to Allen, he just dragged it back with that little movement there away from the defender. And again, just couldn't get the shot on target. But the goals will come. They've got to for a player who tries so often and finds so many good positions. Oh, what a good piece of skill. And he's still going. Number six, Rhoda. <laughs> Two nil to Queen's Park Rangers. Glenn Rhoda, the man who made it, rightly gets the congratulations for his part in the goal. But Clive Allen has scored on this home surface for the first time and he is delighted and when you think of the number that might have gone in for him today it'll be a great relief but Glenn Roder's run from the back was a story in itself Miller was fouled by Curry a tremendous goal But more of that when we've seen if Blackman can reply. There's Keeley at the back and Rhoda now in defence. And the Rangers crowd loving this. The team are playing with so much confidence and poise and optimism. And what about that run by Glenn Rhoda? He picked the ball up in his own half, played an early 1-2, set off and just kept going. And he had the skill to do it and to hold on. And when the cross came in, it was measured for Clive Allen. It evaded Geno. And they'll talk about the way Glenn Roder went down the left at Loftus Road, probably for the rest of this season. Allen. Oh, it was a rod. Oh, just glanced the post at it. Actually, when Clive Allen first went through there, there was a suspicion of handball against Jim Brannigan, the number two. But before we could determine whether he did handle it or not, or the referee could, Stainrod went on and nearly made it three. That's Gregory. And now Mickle White, he's got Allen in the centre. Gregory's also backing up. There's Allen. For Rangers, number two for Allen, and made by the lad playing his first full league game, Gary Micklewhite. And the linesman has spotted something over on that side, which perhaps the referee didn't see, and in fact, it appears it's been disallowed. Maybe for offside, was it? Looks as though the linesman have been flagging there. Possibly for offside. It looks certainly as though Allen was all on his own when the ball went in. So the goal does not stand. Even though Rangers had got back to the centre and the crowd was celebrating. It's still 2-0. And a good win for Queen's Park Rangers in every sense. Some football to admire there from the home side. Glenn Roder's run down the left, which brought goal number two, will be remembered for a very long time. A marvellous piece of play, and Clive Allen, who scored one in the end and had one disallowed, also made his mark in a convincing performance, which ends with a score, Queen's Park Rangers 2, Blackburn Rovers 0, and means that with those three points, Rangers are now level on points with Blackburn.